Welcome to the In Story Show. I'm Devorah Spillman, your host, and this is the summer edition on how empaths do it. And today I am thrilled to welcome Ingrid Honkala. Hi, Ingrid. Hi, Devorah. It's such a pleasure to be here today. Thank you. My pleasure. So before we dive in, I'm going to read a little bit about you. So from her near-death experience at age two, Ingrid Honkala, who is a PhD, was aware of other dimensions of life and was gifted with guidance from beings of light who gave her invaluable insights and assistance as she faced the challenges of growing up and finding her professional destiny as a marine scientist. In her life journey from native Colombia to Europe and her eventual home in the United States and from a deadly war zone to underwater explorations and a NASA research center, she teaches how any life experience can be illuminated from within. If we are willing to pay attention to subtle signals, take our intuition seriously and forgive our most challenging difficulties, anyone can experience a brightly guided life. I just love that. And I know you just wrote a book called that. <laughs> so welcome, Ingrid. So tell us a little bit about what happened to you? Like, what, first just tell me what your book is about and what is a brightly guided life. And then I want to go back into what it was like when it wasn't brightly guided. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Because that's the, 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 the whole thing is how sometimes all the gifts can actually turn into burdens. And right. yeah, that's, that's the story of a lot of us. So, so my book, A Brightly Guided Life, is, is, is a recollection of all those challenges that I went through throughout the course of my life for things that made me feel that I was so different from everybody else. I, at the age of, of 12, Deborah, I realized that I was not like anyone else around me. And I was this alien, and I'm sure this happens, a, a, a lot of us, at some point of our lives will feel like, I am an alien in this world. And I felt I, I just couldn't fit in this world and, and that I had to carry with all these things. I was being like, like given and all these teachings, but there was really no one I could just offer these. So well, I decided to close myself. But wait, okay, so now take us back a little bit, but because you talk about this near death experience and these beings of light. So tell us a little bit about what it was like for you that was so different than everyone else. And this is part of, you know, now we know how to say that this is about being an empath and highly sensitive, but obviously you and the rest of us didn't know anything about that. So what did it, what was it like for you when you were growing up? What was different about you? Oh, I think everything, Deborah. <laughs> <laughs> I had a, a near that experience when I was about two years old. And just from that, I already came with an awareness. I came with, with talents and with gifts that people and kids around my age didn't have. Just right there. Well, just, what, hap what happened? Uh, you want me to tell the, uh, the well, story? Well, just tell it in short because we have a lot of things to tell. But what was the result from that? Okay, yeah, yeah. From the near that experience, I, I came here with like skills, like right after the near that experience, I could read. I, I was three years old, imagine that. I, I could read, I could write, I could resolve mathematical problems. Mm -hmm. I could put puzzles, big puzzles together. I would see my parents because during the near that experience, I had, I experienced the sense of wholeness and oneness. I, I learned, I experienced what we call God, the absolute unifying sense of love. So when I came here and I saw my parents after coming from this state of wholeness, I didn't feel my parents as just as my parents. I felt them as my equal. Wow. I saw myself and I would just say, I'm not this, I'm not this child. <laughs> and I had the awareness to, to think that I am more than this. So I would see, look at other children and say, no, they, they don't know anything. So I couldn't relate with them. And I fell in the state that I was not having to learn anything, Deborah. I just was remembering. So I would say, yeah, none of this is difficult because I'm just remembering. But of course, at, at the same time, I didn't have the language being three, being four, being five, to explain to people what, what is that that I was experiencing. 
and people will look at me even at a school even uh, i went even to the priest in our neighborhood and said look i know i i have i know that this idea of fearing god or or the fear is not real because god is pure love and he would just say what do you know you're about a child how are you saying that we we should not fear god and all these things were happening but at the age of five by doing drawings at a school deborah where i was painting auras and i was painting beings of light all over my drawings the teacher realized what is this and the teacher asked me is this the sun and the stars because i was so reticent painting this and i said no those are my friends the beings of light and she's like oh okay they already thought i was different called my parents and it's when my mom finally realized yes she's seen something there's something here because all those years i've been really different and i would just tell my mom I would tell people, don't call me Ingrid. I would just look at myself in the mirror and say, I am not this person. This is not my name and I should not be here. Wow. So it was a really, really hard childhood. Yes. And so fast forward us a little bit about what happened to you. This kept going through through my entire childhood. I, I, at school, I felt ostracized. I kept feeling different. And uh, there was a moment in, in my life when these starlight figures that I was seeing and all these started to actually communicate with me. So by the age of five, I was already talking to beings of light. So how you go in the world and say, I talked to this. this <laughs> they thought I was just like a child. Oh, yeah, she's just creating these fantasies and but they told me you cannot talk to others because they're not going to understand and and it was actually repeated a few times to me and I realized pretty soon like I just mentioned yeah this is not safe they don't understand but by the time I was 19 there I've been in so many teachings I, I've learned at some point I learned that I had visions I could have access to the future I, I could have access to past life experiences, all through life, all these things started to reveal to me. I was having auto body experiences, just a myriad of things were happening. But by the time I reached 19 and I went to call, I was in college already, is when I stopped this and I said, I don't want to be different. Mm -hmm. I'm tired to be different. I'm tired to, and imagine I have three sisters, all beautiful they were already like started to be chased by boys and all that and I'm like I don't want to be this being that is different from everybody else I want to be like my sisters I want to be like my other friends at college and it's when actually I told I told the beings of light to that I did not want this connection anymore Mm, and, wow. and, yeah and, and it's amazing because this is all about compassion and they said to me you're free. Mm -hmm. You're free to go. And I explain to people, this is not like, um, I always say they didn't go anywhere. What it, I put the example is like when you decide, that, okay, it's time to go college and you leave home, but your parents are always there. It doesn't mean your parents were, were, went anywhere else. They, they're just a call away. That's how it was with the being so life for me. So it, it was like, okay, I know that they're always going to be there, but I, have to leave the nest and go do my thing mm -hmm. and that's what happened next but throughout the years is when i realized that wow i have broken that connection and that that was the the being so light and being that that having that sense of connection with, with the divine with the, the true love was what really really was about Mm -hmm. And that was really was giving me that sense of feeling others, of sensing this love or this pain for humanity. I would go in, in college, I would just, at, at the beginning, I would just go say no it's up to my friends or to people. I just feel this love, it's this huge love for everybody. And they're just like, oh, you're saying you're in love with me? No, 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 we don't want to do that. <laughs> so I just like, oh, I better just don't 
even mention these words. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think you're not alone in that, that, and that's what I think is so important about these conversations is that you shut down something that was essential to you and it had a great cost, didn't it? It did. It did have a great, great cost, Deborah, because through all those years, I, this is, this is something really important because when I was 19 and I told the being so lie that I wanted to actually leave the nest and go do my thing. I had really deep questions at the moment and I, I asked them, when did we actually stop being one with the whole and how is it possible to forget who we truly are? Because wow. I was having these deep experiences and they said to me, in 20 years, you will understand. I was so mad, like, what do you mean in 20 years? I said, yes, you will be ready to actually understand and, and, and give all these to others. They said to me, someday your experience will talk for you and you will be able to have clarity and help others because none of this is for you to keep. And they said to me, someday you will teach all this. And I, at the moment, I, I was so no one in any of these that I said, I'm never going to teach anything. I'm never going to be a teacher, forget it. And they said, when the time is right, you will know. But then, yeah, after that, it's, it's amazing. We just go living life and we started to face all these challenges and fall into all these difficulties and all these sufferings. And yeah, time passed. And, and, and by the time I was uh, about 39 years, I, I started to experience depression. I went to live in a war zone. I realized how hard it was how terrible it was to be in an area where people were dying every day and how difficult it was to face life when you're alone, when you're disconnected. Yeah. When you think that you can solve it by yourself. This is a big topic and it's really exciting because now, of course, we're seeing you in the time they were telling you that was going to happen, right? Because now you're so connected and you have a book and you're speaking and, and all of you who are listening are here part of this summit choosing not to be alone anymore. And there is just this extraordinary opening happening right now. Yes, yes. But like... I think for a lot of people, Deborah, sometimes we have to go to, to what we call the dark night of the soul. Yeah. Or, or, or the, that moment where we are so deep in suffering, that is when we finally have to make a decision. Mm -hmm. I, I would say is what will crack the shell open. And for me was falling into the deepest depression of my life. I, by this time, I was about, um, I would just say I was 40 years old and I had my little baby. He was uh, three years old. And what was actually keeping me alive was my son. The love I had for him because I was like, I'm never going to leave this baby without his mom ever. I felt that the two of us were just one world. So there, were, there was a night in which I fell into the this deep depression to the point that I felt I couldn't even get up. I would just do everything for him. That, that he kept me moving. But I, I remember we were lying on the bed. He was lying next to me, all beautiful. And I thought, what if we go together? And that was the moment when I thought, oh my God, I lost it. <laughs> What am I thinking? I'm crazy. This is really, really, really crazy. And it's when I have to stop praying, Deborah, and asking to, to God, to the beings of light, for any help because I thought I was not worth it of it. Mm -hmm. After many sufferings, many mistakes I made, I thought I'm not worth it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So at that moment, I just said nothing matters. I remember that all I needed at that moment was compassion for myself. <laughs> that was the moment you like, I need to be loving, compassionate, kind towards myself. Mm -hmm. And I pray like I never did mm -hmm. before. Wow. I said, I need help. 
I really need help. It's when I ask for help because I, up to that point, I was like, I can resolve it. Mm -hmm. I'm tough. I'm strong. I, I can do it myself. But no, it's when we realize we're not here to do the work alone. We're here to do the work together. Mm -hmm. And at the very next day, I woke up knowing you have to go. You need to go to talk to a psychologist. And I went to look on the web in my area and I found this psychologist. I wrote his name on a paper. And the exact same day, the, this beautiful synchronicity, the help of the guidance. Like people say sometimes, I don't see beings of light. What I said, no, the, the guidance, the light is everywhere. So that day I met two people and they were open to listen. Because before I thought, who wants to listen? Who cares? And I realized, no, they were, they saw me in such distress. I guess they realized I needed some kind of help and they were open to talk. And these two people throughout the same day in two different occasions gave me the name of the same doctor. <laughs> and I, okay, I, I get it. This is a message. I have to go meet this guy. <laughs> and I went there and, and, oh, this was incredible because he was the first person that told me that let's write what about you write your, about your suffering this is cathartic this helps i thought it was silly i'm not writing anything i've been reading a lot of science but i'm not going to write anything about my, myself i thought it was ego, like egotistic and it's, it's how sometimes we are judging ourselves from every angle not knowing that we could just follow a flow that is so simple and i wrote I show him and we talk about the list of sufferings and he said to me in reading the 37 years of practice, I have never seen someone that has suffered this much and is mentally stable. And at that moment I was so sad. I mean, it, it took a while for, for this list. I was meeting this psychologist for about almost a year. And it's when I said to him, why me? Why this is happening to me is the question that we ponder to ourselves. And he said, he gave me the, 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 the answer I needed to hear at the moment that was absolutely amazing. It was kind of like the switch I needed. He said, why not? <laughs> like, oh. huh? And at that moment he started to say, look, Ingrid, thanks to this, you got this. Thanks to this, you're here. Thanks to this, you found this. And all, everything started to tie together. And I... It was the first time I put myself at the cause and not at the fact. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. the first time I started to realize all of this happened for a reason. Mm -hmm. There is a purpose behind all the experiences. All of this was done for me, not to me. Right. That's such a profound awareness. And I think that's why I'm so passionate about people like you telling your story because everybody thinks that I'm alone. Exactly. Yes. Yes. And I, and, and it's when I, all this is the, the help of this doctor, the people around, it started to show me, wow, I thought that I was alone, but that's not the case. And, and I have this incredible story. Like we usually like, Sometimes we use all these, these met, metaf, metaphoric um, or these metaphors to explain something. And, and people talk to me, how did you do to come out of the spiritual closet? Because I was so afraid about talking about any of these. I, I, I mean, if I would just say to say a word about this, Deborah, I would be sweating. I would be like, I couldn't, the words wouldn't even come. Mm -hmm. But after this awakening I have with the doctor, I was actually feeling like wow in this state of i am understanding what all of this is for but mm -hmm. then i was in the house and this actually is amazing because this literally happened to me i went into the closet <laughs> and i was looking at all the clothes that i have not wear for a while oh this dress and this thing and i was thinking about decluttering the whole thing and i'm like Oh, I started to fall again into that suffering of like, oh, I couldn't wear this dress since I married and since I have my son and my life. And wow, 
<laughs> at that moment I realized how trapped I was in the chapter of me and poor me. Mm, wow. And in the closet there was blinds that were closed and I saw the light shining through the blinds and I opened the blinds and at that moment the light came through and I realized that Rahal life was just to put an example, a book of 10,000 pages and I've been trapped in one paragraph. <laughs> <laughs> and how I was missing the rest of the story, how I was missing so much I could give, I could receive from others. How big, I, I opened these blinds and I saw outside and I'm like, there's an entire world out there and I'm trapped in this closet. <laughs> wow. And now, you I mean, I think we're now seeing you completely on the other side of that. Right. Yes. So, so, you know, one of the, the, the title of the, of this summit is how empaths do it. And so now I want you, now, you know, you're an empath, you know, you're highly sensitive. So now how are you managing? How are you managing now with the whole other side, which is that you're known, you're not hiding anymore. You're out. You told, you told me you left your other job. And so now how do you answer the question about how do empaths do it? Yeah, this is, this is beautiful because I, I actually think that empaths have such an amazing gift because it's the gift that is given to us to see things through the veil. A lot of people stay in the day-to-day -day life in what is today, in the food, in, and, and they don't have the, this possibility of sense anything else. And life passes and now the moment they're going to leave this world, they think I should have, I should have, I should have. Mm -hmm. When we have this possibility to sense and to go beyond, beyond our daily life, beyond of, of our daily chores and start seeing that oh, I'm seeing something in this person. I'm seeing something in this other person. I can sense what, so I said to people, this is an amazing opportunity for you to, not just what I, I try to say to people, don't become that suffering. Be the warrior that is able to hold the hand of the one that is wounded. Mm -hmm. So it's when, when I feel the pain of even a friend, the pain of my mom, I don't merge into that pain anymore because I know that that pain has a purpose. Mm -hmm. The beings of light told me nothing in the universe lacks purpose then now I know that, look, even that sickness, even what is happening. So I don't even pray for the people. Yeah, of course, for the person to get well, but I, I get pray more for the person to have awareness mm -hmm. to the person to ask, what is this for? When mm -hmm. I cannot see it, I say, I say, God, help me see it because I cannot see it. And then the person start like focusing more in what the purpose of this is and not the suffering. Mm -hmm. But how are you managing yourself? Because you know, a lot of the experience for empaths and highly sensitive people is that you're exhausted, overwhelmed, but you become, you know, you, you become debilitated. So now how are you, so that one, I get it. Like that's a, a, a profound awareness that they're, they're it's their awareness, not their suffering. So you're, but a lot of the thing with empaths and senses is that you take it into yourself. So how are you, what are some of your tools and coping things that you do to stay feeling good and strong and clear and, you know, and not being completely depleted? I think, I think for me, the key of everything, Deborah, is awareness. Mm -hmm. I work with awareness. I, 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 actually do different practices where I am just learning to be here in the now. Mm -hmm. And I'm realizing that I am not, the moment like I did in the closet, I take that as mine, I'm being trapped in a story. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's like the realization that all that is happening is actually for good. Mm -hmm. So when I have the clarity that all this has a purpose and all the purpose is to help us become aware beings, to mm -hmm. help us become conscious beings. 
So mm -hmm. I don't see any of that as negative anymore. Mm -hmm. So if my focus is knowing that all that is happening is for good, so wow. I always say everything is in the mind. When I feel exhausted, I, I stop and I say, why am I exhausted? Mm -hmm. This is in my mind. And of course, sometimes if I realize that it's being too much, what I do is like, okay, let's put it aside for a moment. If my body needs rest, I go rest. Mm -hmm. And I go take a nap. Now I don't run from that. In the past, I used to think, oh, taking naps? That's for children. <laughs> I'm like, in my body, I pay attention to my body and what my body is telling me. Mm -hmm. if my body is telling me I need to eat, I need to drink. I have come even to that state in which we can do it. We can start listening to our body. And like when we meditate, when we actually sit in, in, in contemplation, when we start learning what our body also needs and wants. If I feel I, I'm tired, I need to go rest, I do it. Right. But the most important thing for me is that I have come to the realization, Deborah, that there's no good or bad. There is only a process that is bringing us to consciousness, mm -hmm. to awareness. I, I, I love this sentence that says, if the essence of who you are is that of love, joy, peace, kindness. So the true question is, what am I doing to disturb it? Mm. So little by little, we go removing, and, and through awareness, we go removing this or, or paying attention to those parts of us that are making us feel disaligned. Why am I feeling this pain? Is this pain mine? Mm. We start questioning, is this pain mine? Because I was feeling really well. So where is this coming from? Oh, I, and sometimes I feel it from my mom. And even I call her, mom, are you not feeling well today? Oh, no, I'm feeling this and that. I'm like, okay. Now I know where it is coming from. Because when we have that deep empathy and, oh, I am this being that I can even feel the pain of others. There's this been moments in my life, I even have happened to me that in moments that I have of compassion, kindness, I would just say, I take the pain from this person. Mm. And I did it. And now I, I was with this pain and now I was learned how to go and, and, and clean this from yourself and realize this is all for the purpose of growing, mm -hmm. of evolving, yeah. of reuniting with the light. It's so beautiful. And I think, it, it, I think you're right. This awareness is such a huge shift because what you said, you know, was that you cut yourself off, you disconnected. And, um, and when you reconnect it, then you become able to get back up, rejuvenate, take care of yourself. And, and, you know, you mentioned that you like to do a walking meditation and I was going to ask you to describe how you do that. Yes. And I, I really recommend this to people, especially because I have discovered that in this world that is moving so fast. People can, most of people cannot sit and meditate. They, they just cannot do it. I talk to people and say like, don't put me to sit there because I cannot even concentrate. What I have come to learn, Deborah, is that meditation is not a doing. It's a state of being. Mm -hmm. The moment you turn it into a doing, it's a chore. Mm -hmm. and it, no, it doesn't do anything anymore. And another thing that I, I, I have sharing with people is the understanding that all the practices that you do, even breathing practices, looking at a candle, concentrating in the body, whatever you do, what is it giving you? Awareness is the path to awareness. The path of the, the, an aware being is, is, is one that the more you, you bring that state of awareness into your life, the more you're understanding the purpose of everything that is happening, the more in tune you are the more connected you are with the divine, with your consciousness, which is what we are. So what I do is that, uh, okay, you cannot sit there and, and, and cross your legs and repeat some words. Then I said, Let, let's be more dynamic. What about we go for a walk? But I walk in a state of complete awareness. So when I'm walking, I'm hearing every bird, every cricket, 
I can hear the wind. I can feel the sun touching my skin. I hear my steps. If I'm walking with my dog, I can hear the bell. And sometimes, I mean, people have to feel safe with this, but I have reached the point where I walk with my eyes closed because the deep connection with sound is so important. And smell, I'm smelling the plant. So at that moment, Deborah, you are in absolute connection with the present moment. You are at a state of presence. And, and I said to people, hey, sometimes I do my, my walking meditation. I arrive back to home and I realize I didn't hear any bird, any cricket, nothing. Oh, but I had the awareness. So what I said to people is that don't feel bad. We have to change that switch in which we have learn to feel guilty and to feel bad about everything. And at that moment that you have the realization that you didn't hear, you didn't see, you didn't feel, pat yourself in the shoulder for being aware, mm -hmm. for the greatness of being aware, not because you didn't do it. Yeah, so great. I love that. I always tell people, I call it pause, notice, and shift. Like you pause, yes. you notice, and then you can, change something choose something different so i i think it's so true what you're describing this whole path of awareness is 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 so key and i asked you to talk about going for a walking meditation because i go i use walking and running as well in the forest all the time and what i really love is just your extra emphasis on like putting away everything you're listening to like oh you know it's easy to go into the forest and listen to a talk uh, on your headphones right so putting everything away and that deeper listening you know because often i'll get my most inspired teachings or classes or meditations or whatever it is once i let myself um just be present in the place where i am that's true and that's so so important ever because i said to people there's something i i said that i have realized in my life is sometimes when we're doing all that, when we are thinking, we're really not truly thinking. We're not connected with the creative thinking of the universe. When you're roaming in your life with the same thing in your head, I said, people, you're not thinking, you're only remembering. Mm -hmm. You're only repeating a story. We are like the cow roaming, the same, like eating the same grass that has to go to four stomachs. What about we swallow? and we connect with the creative thinking of the universe. We receive the new. Right. And it only can happen, like you say, if I completely leave all those things behind and come to state of awareness. At that moment when there's, you realize there's a point of no thought, there's a point of absolute presence, then you're open to receive. That's right. The greatest inventions in the, in, in, in the history happen not when the person was involved in the problem, but when it was out of it. Right, right, right. I know, I'm so all about that. I often say that when you tap into that deep, what I call your soul story, it will reveal to you your purpose. And that whole concept, I'm building a whole new thing called reveal, because I think that's that shift in state where you get out of your own way and you get into that more expanded state and then things become revealed to you without effort it's, you get out of that try harder mind what you described you know that's stuck in an old story you're just rehashing um so super exciting i just i really love what's opening up in the world and um so tell us a little bit about your free gift um for people so that they can stay connected with you you know we're, we have the facebook group so we would love to hear from people what are your thoughts your experiences what do you relate to from ingrid's story um and ingrid tell them what they can do to hear your this wasn't even her whole story <laughs> Yes, yes. So that, that's why I wanted to, to offer this gift, Deborah, because uh, they will be able to connect with the whole story, hear about the end, the, my near that experience, hear about how this whole connection happened with the beings of light, even how the disconnection happened, and actually the true purpose of the near that experience, which was to bring about the message of connection. 
the purpose and power of connection. Mm -hmm. So it, and and also is it offers tools for people to to live a life being an empath, and 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 how to be able to to open themselves and 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 connect with their truth. Good. And it's, it's so important. You know, you said about being illuminated and like, I have a thing called the, a year group called the in-story way. And I like to say it's the in-story way to create and live an illuminated life. Cause I think what you're saying with the whole thing with beings of light. And I think that we're being called to let our light shine that, you know, I feel like it's been covered over. You know, I always say it's like we, you can, your soul is this light being inside you, so to speak, but it gets gunk on it. gets, but we can clean it off and it's still just as shiny as it ever was. And I, we see that in you, like we see it shining. And it, even though it, even though you disconnected and for anyone watching, you can always reconnect. I think yeah. that's the message. It's never gone. Yes, that's absolutely beautiful. Thank you for mentioning that, Deborah, because that's it. There was, there was a person that asked me once, how the beings of light summon you or how you summon them, something like that. And, and I would say, this is not that. I said, everything is here now. We are like radius. We just have to learn to tune that dial and to reconnect. It's like if you have all the internet waves, all the radio waves, TV, everything is here now. The fact that we cannot see it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. We just have to learn to tune and like the, the, the best way that is for anybody walking, meditating, whatever, but it's just reach that state of a quiet mind. Mm -hmm. we will put the dial in the place where we're now open to receive, to receive the light. Yeah, and I think that that being connected both like spiritually expansively connected and then connected with each other. And that's part of what's happening now is we're starting to tell each other our stories and creating safe places for people to share. Um, yes. And, and another beautiful, beautiful thing is that I tell people how important, because you see it uh, through my, my whole experience, how important our uniqueness is. Yeah. And I put the, the, the example of the fingers and the hand. If you see a hand, every finger is absolutely unique. But if you cut this finger off, what can it do? Nothing. It, it, it cannot actually do absolutely anything. But once you have them all together, they have a purpose of connection to help each other. So it's the uniqueness that encompasses oneness. Mm -hmm. 100%. So, and yes. you know, I love metaphor. You obviously love metaphor too. And they're very, uh, very powerful and useful. <laughs> so everybody share with us, connect. Look, you, your first point of connection can first get Ingrid's free gift and listen deeply to her story. It, it's very transformative to listen to it. And then share your experience with us in the Facebook group. Because this is going to start you. If you're here in this moment, you are being called to be more connected and to share and trust kind of trust that so start by getting her free gift then share with us in the facebook group and then figure out and then you're going to have a sense of what that next is for you so ingrid leave us with one last thought as we wrap up yes i i want to say to to all that honor who you are honor your uniqueness that's your light go back to to who you truly are. Like you were mentioning before, Liz, it's time to clean, to take that shower that will remove all that scum and go back to our authentic being. Once we're there, oh, we realize my uniqueness is a gift. Mm -hmm. So I just say, use the light of, of who you are to illuminate, to share with the rest. I said that the light of each other all the light together someday will make a huge flame, the flame of consciousness, the, 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 the opening of, of the heart and, and the connection, the, the knowing that all of us are that love. Totally. It's beautiful. It's so it's an honor for us to be part of this. And thank you so much for sharing your amazing, amazing story. Um, thank you so much. Thanks so much for having me. This is amazing. The, the, the possibility to now be open to the world and share with no more fear. 
<laughs> I love it. So everybody, I hope you are inspired to share your stories as well. And as I always say in farewell, remember to go out in the world, share your story, live your purpose, and be a blessing. Bye, folks. <laughs>